This is Dan Meyer with RCR Wireless News. And I'm here with uh, Neville Myers, who's the VP of Product Development at Qualcomm Technologies, to talk a bit about uh, the uh, private LTE network. So Neville, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Very good. Well, we start off with, I guess, what's a little, um, I guess, what is a private LTE network? I know we hear a lot about LTE networks being deployed now by operators. Uh, and I think uh, private LTE networks is kind of a new thing we're hearing more about. Uh, I guess, describe, I guess, what is a private LTE network for those who don't know much uh, about that? It's a, basically a, an LTE network that is built on premises, okay. um, and it's bespoke for the uh, op, for the owner of the, those premises. It could be an enterprise, could be a port, could be an airport, a logistics hub, um, and basically what happens is you build a network um, on their premises. It can be run out of the cloud, so the entire core can be cloud-based. Uh, data can be local using a gateway. Or if uh, the owner prefers to have everything local, you can put the uh, EPC in the core locally as well. Um, the great thing about these networks is it allows the owner to actually have specific types of services um, that wouldn't uh, otherwise be allowed uh, or supported. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, not only can they support low data rates in this network, but they can also support very high data rates, and so they can collect uh, data from big machines as well as uh, from sensors and smaller machines as well. Got it. So it would be more, more customizable for the user? Much more customizable. Much yeah. more customizable. Um, and the, um, with the advent of Multifire, mm -hmm. which is a technology that runs uh, in unlicensed spectrum based on LTE mm -hmm. uh, in 5 gigahertz, these networks do not need uh, license spectrum. They can be built with license spectrum. In other words, uh, mobile network operators can build these bespoke networks, um, but you can also use shared spectrum as in, as in the, the CBRS band here mm -hmm. in the United States in 3.5 gigahertz, or with uh, 5 gigahertz multifier as well yeah. in the unlicensed spectrum. And how does it differ or how is it similar to perhaps like a low rod network or some of these other networks we hear about that are kind of targeting the IoT space? So LoRa and Sigfox and narrowband uh, uh, LTE uh, really uh, target uh, sensors that um, use very uh, low data rates okay. yep. um, and that are in a wide area. So, you know, for example, if you have uh, water meters or uh, power meters that uh, need to be monitored, then typically those would be in a wider area network. Okay. In a network uh, such as a private network, what you really want to do is able to be, uh, to be able to connect uh, devices that have variable um, uh, rates. So th mm -hmm. the rates of data transmission could go from gigabits uh, per second all the way down to sensors that are transmitting uh, kilobits uh, or even bits per second. And so you need that flexibility within the network. Also sometimes that uh, data is sensitive and so you don't want to pull that data back into the uh, wide area. You want to keep it local. Mm -hmm. And so with these uh, private networks you can do that. And th those are you know, some of the uh, bigger differentiations between LoRa, Sigfox, and, and some of the, the wide area mobile network, uh, LTE networks. I guess, any, I guess any sort of examples of where a private LTE network might be used, any sort of like, use cases or, or enterprises that might uh, look to use these kind of networks? Where would it, where would it make the most sense for, for kind of uh, industries? Would it make sense? Yeah, we uh, did extensive research uh, with a company called Harbor Research, okay. and we identified 15 different segments, uh, seg segments such as upstream oil and gas, downstream oil and gas, uh, logistics hubs, um, hubs generally, for example, uh, airports, ports, um, warehouses, factories, everywhere where you need this um, quality of service with respect to uh, different types of classes of devices that are in the network. You need reliability, low latency, you need the data to be local, mm -hmm. uh, you need really good coverage, and you know, LTE and uh, uh, Multify give you that really good coverage. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of devices to be supported on the network, and you need security. And uh, all, of, all of that uh, comes with uh, these LTE-based technologies like LTE, TDD, and uh, Multifire. Yeah, as you ask you, I guess, what's the benefit of using a cellular-based technology like LTE as opposed to uh, maybe an unlicensed or something like a Wi-Fi uh, for, for an enterprise that's looking to go down this road? It's uh, all of those, those reasons I've just um, highlighted, you know, security, okay. reliability, coverage, mm -hmm. better performance, uh, more devices that can actually be supported in mm -hmm. the network, and a critical quality of service, uh, which gives you a huge a number of differentiators over uh, the traditional um, uh, Wi-Fi type networks that are also deployed. That's not to say that uh, you would rip out and replace everything, but certainly you could create an overlay network that runs a private network alongside the existing networks that are in place. Makes sense. Great. Well, they definitely appreciate the information. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you very much, Dan. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah.